morning. Uh, welcome to our webinar series on RNA Scope Spot Studio software. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're going to discuss the quantitative analysis of RNA and C2 hybridization. My name is Sarah Agee, and I'm the Director of Marketing at Advanced Cell Diagnostics. And I'd like to introduce our speakers. I just want to note that you will be muted throughout this webinar, but it's, uh, you know, we're going to have a Q&A session at the conclusion of both of our speakers. So during the presentation, if you'd like to type questions into the chat box, and then we will address those at the end of the discussion. Our first speaker is Xiao Jun Ma, the Chief Scientific Officer of Advanced Cell Diagnostics. And our next speaker will be Kai Hartman, Director of Product Marketing at Definian, who will give a brief preview of the Spot Studio software. Uh, the title of Xiao Jun's presentation is Automated Quantitative RNA and C2 Hybridization with RNA Scope. I want to note this is the first of two webinars uh, that will introduce Spot Studio as a new quantitative analysis tool for RNA-ish. It's been co-developed by ACB and Definian for use with the RNA scope and C2 hybridization technology. All right, with that, I'll turn things over to Xiao Jun. Hello. Thank you, Sarah. Hi, everyone. And, um, and my talk will be on automated quantitative RNA C2 hybridization with RNA scope. This is an uh, introduction to a, a software called RNA Scope Spot Studio which you will see a live demo later. Uh, later. Here's the outline of uh, my presentation. Uh, first, I will give you an overview of RNA in situ hybridization. And then I will get uh, into some details about RNA scope technology, how it works. Then I will describe to you the principles of quantitative in situ hybridization. And finally, I will give you some data that validates our quantitative in situ hybridization approach. So, as you know, RNA in situ hybridization is a powerful technology uh, technique in molecular biology. It has been used for over 40 years. Over the 40 years, numerous attempts have been made to improve the performance and also make it more practical. The last effort in the development of RNA scope by advanced cell diagnostics in the last few years. We commercialized the assay in 2010. So why, why is there such uh, interest in RNA in surgical hybridization? Here are some of the reasons. As we know, diseases and tissues are highly complex and heterogeneous, consisting of many different cell types. It is the spatial and a cell type specific expression of a gene that links the gene to its cellular function. However, this link is lost when you use blind bind methods such as RT-PCR to generate data for gene expression. In situ, gene expression data can be obtained by using immunophysical chemistry. However, about 70% of the human protein today do not have reliable antibodies for IHC analysis. In fact, for a significant subset of human genes, such as secreted proteins, in situ hybridization to RNA may be superior to IHC because while the protein spills out of the cell, the RNA stays in the cytoplasm, which allows you to more accurately uh, localize the source of the RNA. Finally, for the tens of thousands of non coding RNAs that's been discovered recently, in situ RNA detection is the only option for in situ gene expression analysis. So despite the utility and the power of RNA in situ hybridization, uh, RNA ISTH is, <clears throat> has very limited uh, use today in clinical diagnostics. Even in the research world, uh, uh, a study with RNA ISTH is, is not common. So these are the, some of the uh, issues with traditional RNA ISH. The first, they usually, have, they usually have very long and complicated protocols, takes several days to, to complete, which often is a source of repro poor reproducibility. Even after you have finished your uh, running the protocol, and the time to result can be long, especially if you are using radioactive labeled probes, which takes days to weeks of autoradiographic exposure. So make, make a, a turnaround time that is not acceptable for clinical testing. In terms of performance, 
traditional RNA ICH has suffered from low sensitivity, which is make it in, makes them um, difficult to detect most of the clinically relevant biomarks. It also has low specificity and uh, cross hybridization with uh, off targets which leads to uh, uh, inconclusive results. Uh, uh, in most uh, traditional RNA ISH, ISH methods, uh, the tissue and cell morphology is not well preserved enough to enable you to look at single cell level uh, gene expression. And one final point, which is actually the focus of today's talk, is that traditional RNA ISH often do not provide quantitative signals, so you are limited to qualitative analysis. So RNA scope was designed to address these issues. Uh, these issues. And in in, uh, in the overview, uh, the article assay looks pretty mu pretty similar to the traditional assays, consisting of the three uh, four steps. First, you polymerize the cells through pretreatment steps, and then you hybridize uh, with your target target probe. And hybridization signals are then being amplified, and then signal finally is detected and visualized under a microscope. What differentiates RNA scope from previous uh, from uh, existing RNA ICH methods is this uh, a, 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 a proprietary probe design, which we call double Z probes. And these probes are depict, depicted here as a little Z uh, uh, structures. The use of a double Z design enables a 400-fold improvement in signal-to-noise ratio, such that you can visualize single RNA molecules under an ordinary microscope. So how it is achieved is shown in this animation. Here you see the your target mRNA, which was made um, accessible by pretreatments. The double Z probes, which are specially designed oligo probes, then are hybridized to a target. And the probes are designed to hybridize in pairs, as shown here. And the, the target region of the pair of probes covers uh, about 40 to 50 bases. This short target region is, is, is important because it confers robustness against partial RNA degradation, which is often the case in, in uh, formally fixed paraffin-embedded clinical specimens. So then the uh, target probe is hybridized to pre-amplifier, and pre-amplifier binds to, uh, to the, the other side, side of the, the Z. And then the amplifier is hybridized to pre-amplifier, and, and and then label probes is hybridized to the amplifiers. The label probe is the one that carries the actual label for detection in either chromogenic enzymes or fluorescent molecules. As you can see here, by this sequential hybridization, you assembled a, a sort of tree-like structure which has a very high density of label per base pair. In fact, for typical uh, RNA, we designed 20 such probes here to span a uh, one KB region. This gives you additional uh, amplification. Signal amplification is uh, is not sufficient by itself because you have to also control uh, background. So this is where the uh, double Z design uh, was uh, was designed to do. Okay. So here is how it how it achieves that. Here's an example of a non-specific target. And very likely, from the, the pair of probes, double Z probes, only one of them will find this non-specific target and bind to it. However, this single Z binding will not support its, uh, its hybridization to a pre-amplifier, which requires, uh, uh, requires uh, uh, two of the Zs binding simultaneously. So this is the mechanism of, suppress of, of noise suppression by uh, the double Z design. So it is through the uh, highly efficient signal amplification and, and background suppression that allow us to achieve the 400-fold enrichment in signal to noise ratio, such that you can visualize single RNA molecules. RNA scope has built-in multiplex capability. If that is, you can measure multiple RNAs at the same time. And this can be achieved by uh, designing target probes each carry uh, different recognition sequences for different uh, signal amplification molecules and detection systems. So the different targets will appear in um, as different colors or different channels. 
One can also design different targets to carry the same uh, recognition sequence for the same uh, signal amplification system. So a pool of signal will be generated. And we have demonstrated that you can pull as many as, uh, as 10 different targets in, in, a, in a single probe. This is an example of a multiplex um, ion scope assay. Here, a breast cancer FFPE tissue section is hybridized to three probes. One of it is uh, PEN-CK. Uh, it's actually a pen cytokeratin probe. This, in fact, is an example of a pool to probe design. It has, uh, it consists of uh, three probes uh, targeting three different cytokeratins. Two other probes are UPA and PI-1. Uh, UPA is in green and PI-1 is labeled in red. As you can see here, the pan probe lights up the tumor cells as expected. On the other hand, UPA, UPA and the PI-1 shows up in a subset of stromal cells that are surrounding, surrounding the tumor tissue. If you look more closely, you can see that there are actually different kinds of stromal cells showing, uh, like, uh, showing uh, expressing these um, two mRNAs. Some cells only express in PI-1, as they assume as uh, predominantly red signal. Some cells only express UPA, as, as they appear as purely green uh, signals. And there are rarely a few cells that actually express both mRNAs in the same cell. So the spatial, it is the spatial information, gene expression information, and the cell type specificity of, of these kind of markers that really underscores the power of RNA tissue hybridization, such as RNA scope. Imagine the result you would get by grinding up this, this tissue section and extract the RNA and then perform uh, RT-PCR analysis. What you would get is an average of a signal of these markers, stromal markers, for example, that will not represent any of the cells you're looking at. Here is an example of chromogenic detection, and also in, in a formative fixed paraffin embedded tissue. Here we're detecting the PDL2 RNA in the tonsil. So here the onoscope assay detected, detected signals of a PDL2 in a subset of immune cells. And here we're using a fast red as chromogen, so the signals appear as, as individual red uh, dots here. And each dot representing a single uh, PDL2 RNA molecule. So the ability to detect a single RNA molecules enables a straightforward way of quantifying RNA scope uh, results by simply counting the number of signal dots in a cell. And this concept is validated in this particular experiment. In this experiment, HeLa cells are hybridized to HER2 probe, uh, which is in green, and 18S ribosomal RNA, which is red. 18S ribosomal RNA, of course, lights up the cytoplasm of the HeLa cells. But focus on the green signal here. You see the green signals appear as a uh, discrete punctate dot throughout the cytoplasm of HeLa cells. So we counted. Um, the number of dots for, uh, in a cell for about 100 cells, and we come up with an average about 14.4 dots per cell. In parallel, we analyzed uh, a portion of the stem cell culture for HER2 mRNA uh, expression using more conventional assays. In this case, using quantigen uh, assay to uh, analyze HER2 mRNA in cell lysis. By using a calibration curve, we uh, Got the result that the, the, the uh, HeLa cells expresses HER2 mRNA at about 17 copies per cell. So these two estimates come in uh, uh, very close to each other, and in, in indicating that the, the signals you see here on the onoscope stain slides, each individual dot, uh, dots indeed cannot represent more than one uh, more than one molecule. Uh, not only demonstrating uh, that the single dots you see here are sing from single order molecules, but also validates that by simply counting the number of dots in the cell is a valid way of quantifying um, uh, uh, the transcript levels at, on a cell-to-cell -cell basis. So 
So counting uh, dots by hand it, uh, works, uh, as I just, I just showed you, but it became, uh, can become tedious and, and error-prone quickly when you are dealing with hundreds of thousands of cells. So we've been working with Definians to develop a specialized image ana analysis software just for RNA scope. And these pictures show he shown here are um, the kind of results the software can generate. The software will uh, analyze the image and look for hematopsin stained nuclei, which appears uh, in blue, and, and make an outline of, of the cells in, in, the, in the image. And this is shown here in, the green, uh, in green outline. And the software then will detect the RNA scope stained RNA signals and, and mark them as, as red, little red circles here. So the number of dots and the size of the dots then can be can be tabulated in a table, as uh, shown on the right. Uh, for each of the cells in, in the region of interest, you can um, uh, summarize what is average number, uh, uh, what is the uh, average size of the spots you are seeing here, and also how many spots are there in each cell. So the combination of RNA scope with a specialized image analysis software allows you to derive uh, copy number, uh, transcript copy numbers on a single cell basis. This is a screenshot of actual software, the Onscope Spot Studio, which uh, Kai uh, later on will give you a live demo. But right here is just a, 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 a screenshot. And it's here, here on the left are the, the buttons, which allows you to navigate through the workflow easily in a very intuitive manner. And down here, you have uh, adjustable settings, which allows you to adjust your sensitivity of uh, finding the different cells, uh, cells in an image. And it will also have adjustable settings for you to detect the onoscope uh, signals, signal spots. So as a way of validating this uh, quantitative RNA situ hybridization approach, uh, we um, developed a whole to mRNA assay. As you know, HER2 um, testing is a, a, a can be considered as a poster child of companion diagnostics because the testing result uh, is used to qualify a patient for anti hotel therapies. Only HER2 positive patients are eligible for uh, HER2 uh, therapy. HER2 testing currently is, is, um, is done using either IHC, which analyzes HER2 protein overexpression, or, or uh, DNA fish, which looks, uh, looks at the uh, gene copy number uh, amplification. Uh, even after 10 years of uh, clinical testing uh, using these methods, uh, these methods remain far from perfect. In a recent estimate, about 20% of HODL testing, testing result, results in breast cancer are incorrect. And both methods can give equivocal results. That is, you could not determine whether it's HER2 positive or negative. In fact, even combining the two methods together, about 5% of breast cancer patients remain to, be, uh, to have an equivocal HER2 status, making, their, uh, making difficult to manage uh, the, uh, the patients. So we thought that by looking at HER2 mRNA using RNA scope, we offer an alternative approach to determine HER2 status which may actually uh, lead to a resolution of equivocal cases by um, that as a result of conventional means. So we set up the assay uh, in, in to, to be run on three uh, adjacent slides. Of course, one of the slides is used to hybridize uh, to the HER2, uh, HER2 probe. And then there's a, a, a second slide is used to hybridize to UBC, which is served as a positive control. And the third slide to hybridize to a DAB probe, which is the bacterial genes that was a negative control, which would not give you any signal in the human cell. So we have actually, we used automated uh, on scope assay to stain uh, over about 130 uh, breast cancer um, specimens. And then these uh, stained slides are digitized and then analyzed by the on scope studio software. And these are a couple of examples of the uh, spot studio analysis. On the top row is a case of host negative uh, sample. As you can see here in the uh, raw image, you have uh, the um, hematoxin nuclei and, they, 
in, the, uh, in blue, and then you have the brown uh, punctate dots, which uh, are the host air mounting signals. The software then automatically finds uh, the cell boundaries by locating where the hematoxin is in the nuclei, and also detects the brown um, ionoscope staining and a mark them in, in the green. In contrast, in the HER2 positive case, where you have high levels of mRNA, and the signals from those mRNAs tend to overlap and form clusters, and the software treat those signals uh, differently and mark them as in red. So the, the estimated um, HER2 gene expression uh, uh, from these samples are then compared to uh, QRT-PCR. And this is a scatter plot of the two, uh, two types of data. And what is shown here in red are those samples which are uh, HER2 positive by, uh, by HER2 DNA fish. And the black ones are the, those are negative cases by DNA fish. As you can see here, both measurements of HER2 mRNA allows a good, very good separation of HER2 positive cases from HER2 negative cases. In addition, Despite it being two completely different technologies, the two data sets, uh, either by RNA-scope or by RT-PCR, appear to be strongly correlated with the correlation coefficient of 0.84, serving as a, 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 uh, a validation of uh, the quantitative RNA-scope approach. Uh, this slide is, uh, is a busy slide, and um, so I will only uh, um, go over some of the data, and this data has been published recently in the Journal of Molecular Diagnost Diagnostics, and it actually is made uh, special in the cover of uh, in that issue, so I encourage you to uh, take a look uh, at the paper from there. So I'd like to direct your attention to the upper right corner of the slide. Here we actually are making use of the single cell level quantification uh, data generated by the Arnesco uh, uh, Spot Studio. So for the cells in the region of interest, we, we count, we actually classify each cell, cell by cell, whether a cell is HER2 positive. If a positive cell is defined uh, as, as having more than 15 single dots, or having or have at least one cluster, so then you can count how many, what percentage of cells in, in the region of interest is positive. So this percentage positive rate is a nice metric. As you can see here, that separates nicely the negative uh, cases uh, from HER2 positive cases, which, uh, um, which are determined by uh, HER2 DNA fish. A cutoff point at 37.5 percent can be derived from this uh, small training set. And then we apply this uh, scoring system and training set to independent validation set. And these samples here, as shown on the uh, lower left, are the cases which have unequivocal hodo status according to DNA fish. They are either po unequivocally uh, positive, amplified, or, or uh, negative, or not amplified. As you can see here, the hodo to mRNA uh, quantification re result by RNA scope uh, has overall 97% concordance with the fish determined hodo status. Only two of the cases were potentially false positive by the RNA scope approach. So this, while this uh, uh, high-level concordance validates that uh, our uh, on scope based quantification approach, but what, what we really wanted to see is that, is that whether the on scope based photo de determination can resolve equivocal cases, for example, as a result of photo testing. And this is shown on the bottom right corner. So all of these cases are photo equivocal based on, based on fish, uh, the fish assay. All these cases are then tested by IHC to further resolve photo status. And a subset of these cases are resolved into uh, IHC HER2 positive or negative. As you can see here, the HER2 mRNA quantif quantification result also has very nice correlation with IHC. About 87% of cases are concordant. Importantly, for a, for a subset, the rest of the, uh, the cases that uh, uh, HER2 IHC could not resolve, which are, of course, are the dual equivocal cases. The RNA scope based assay can resolve these into either HER2 negative like or HER2 positive like 
uh, uh, status. As you can see here, the signal distribution in the whole negative case is, pre is pretty much like the uh, distribution you see for the group that are, uh, that were classified as, as the whole negative by uh, the mRNA uh, assay and uh, validated by IHC. So this experiment, this experiment together validates the, the quantification approach and indicating that by uh, it, by single cell based on it, all the analysis, you may have a potential to actually uh, to go beyond uh, the current testing methods to resolve equivocal uh, biomarker analysis results. Here is another uh, validation experiment we've done together with a customer. The customer has uh, 12 different cell lines expression target of interest at different levels, and they have obtained gene expression. Uh, target uh, expression data with RT-PCR. The 12 cell lines are then made into a tissue microarray, and the tissue microarray section is, is analyzed by RNA scope. And, uh, and that uh, same slide then is digitized and quantified using uh, RNA scope studio software. And then the results are compared with RT-PCR. This is an example of uh, uh, analysis results by Arniscope Studio, Spot Studio. So um, on the left uh, is uh, it's a histogram of uh, the, copy, the copies per cell for the, uh, all the cells analyzed. On this particular TMA, we have three, uh, three cores as, as replicates. You can see here that all the, the histograms look nearly identical, indicating uh, high levels of reproducibility, reproducibility, both in terms of uh, the assay and and, uh, and the quantification. On the right image here is a, is a visualization of the copy numbers on this, of each cell. Each cell is a the the outline is colored according to the expression level. You can see here the predominant outline is in orange, that's because the, which matches the color on the histogram, which indicates that most of the cells have more than six copies per cell. So by averaging uh, among the three cores, we obtain uh, an average of 15 copies per cell for this target on the, in this cell line. And this compared to a relative gene expression data by RT-PCR shown in, uh, here. So how does the data correlate with RT-PCR across the 12 cell lines? So here is the scatter plot. It actually, once again, shows a very strong, uh, highly significant correlation between these two types of measurements. On the x-axis is the QRT-PCR measurement. On the y-axis is the on scope measurement. So this serves, serves as the second validation that, uh, of our, in our quantitative in situ uh, hybridization approach. Uh, to summarize, on scope is a novel ISH technology. And it has several key uh, uh, features. One of the most important is, is uh, single molecule detection and single cell resolution, at the same time uh, preserving cell morphology and tissue context. And these features form the basis for the quantitative in situ uh, only analysis uh, approach I, I just talked about. The only scope technology is capable of multiplexing and compatible with uh, uh, routine FAP clinical specimen, and it's fully automatable on, on um, instruments like the Ventana machines, which makes it easy to standardize across clinical laboratories. One final point I would like to make about our quant quant uh, quantification approach is that unlike other uh, extraction-based uh, other quantification, quantification methods such as the RT-PCR, quantitative in, in situ hybridization requires and empowers the pathologist. First, it requires the pathologist to identify the cells of interest on the slide for quantitative analysis. This leverages the pathologist's knowledge of a pathology and, uh, and make sure that the most clinical relevant data is generated. And secondly, the assay uh, requires, uh, empowers the pathologist to interpret the molecular marker information in the, histo in the histopathological context. This provides the best information for the, to the pathologist for better decision making. So um, I will stop here. Uh, thank you.
Thank you all for your attention. All right. Thank you, Shajun. Next, we'll have Kai Hartman from Divinians, who will give a brief overview of the Spot Studio uh, platform. And also, I want to remind everyone that if you have any questions, we'll have a Q&A period after the presentations are concluded. And you can type any questions you have into the chat box. OK, I'll turn things over to Kai. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you, Cha Jung. So I would like um, to show you a little bit of the how behind um, what, um, what Cha Jung has shown you. So um, he has shown you very, um, I think, uh, in a very nice way um, how uh, um, ACD has validated uh, the assay and uh, also the software uh, for quantification. And I would like to spend a few minutes uh, in showing you the uh, benefits of um, an AirScope Spot Studio software and uh, how this uh, will help you in the quantification of our NASCOPE essays. So I think the main question um, that um, people who will quantify or want to quantify or um, evaluate uh, our NASCOPE essays is really uh, how much time do you want to spend on manual scoring, which is, of course, um, prone to subjectivity and also pure, uh, poor reproducibility. Um, so the software has been developed, as Cha Jung um, mentioned already, uh, together uh, with Definions and ACD as a co-development. And um, the target of this development was really to give customers um, of ACD a tool into their hands which, uh, with which they can very easily uh, and very reliably quantify um, the RNA scope assays. And um, the two ben uh, main benefits are uh, better data and higher efficiency. So better data, what I mean by that is that you really get consistent and reproducible results and that you get more detailed data on a cell-by-cell -cell basis um, by quantifying the spot signals uh, for individual cells. And high efficiency uh, means two things, really um, learning it in minutes, so it's uh, really very easy, so this was one of the main, um, main goals of the software, to make it as easy as possible, uh, such that um, everyone with, without prior uh, knowledge of um, image analysis and also um, uh, with just um, let's say um, average experience with computers can uh, learn the software in, in just a few minutes. And the training on the software really just takes half an hour. Um, and you're, you're through uh, completely. And the fast track to res results such that you uh, really accelerate uh, how you um, uh, evaluate uh, the um, RNA scope assays by automatic quantification. And that's uh, all I would like to um, show you up front. And I'll just quickly jump uh, right into the software. So what you see here is um, um, one slide. This is a breast uh, cancer example in this case. And um, you see here on the left-hand side the high-level workflow. And we are at the end of the workflow, so I have done an analysis of this particular slide already. And we can have a look at how the result looks like. So we can quickly navigate through the slides. We can have a look at um, the cell identification. Uh, if we take a closer look, you can have a look at the individual spots. Um, for this, uh, these regions here, you can have a look at the histograms that um, is connected to these. And if you want to, you can also have a look at the individual uh, cell results. So if you click through here, you can get results on an individual uh, cell basis here. And uh, all this data, uh, of course, the table on the right-hand side, and also uh, the histogram uh, data, and uh, the data on averages and means um, of the individual cells, uh, and, and of all uh, the whole cell population is, of course, also uh, exported.
it automatically and accessible in a CSV format afterwards for further analysis. So just to um, show you briefly um, two points um, in the whole workflow, um, a little bit more in detail. So you start with uh, importing images into the system, um, and these can be in um, uh, whole slide images or um, images from a microscope camera. Um, you um, can adjust settings uh, for an individual slides or uh, can use the um, same settings for the whole slide. And I will just jump into this point to show you briefly how, how this works. So um, let me go into uh, another slide, um, another example, and I would just um, show you um, how the workflow looks like so you can make some annotations on the slide. And um, you can also preview the results uh, for individual um, parts of the image to get a feeling of how the final result look li looks like and fine tune that with, with a few settings here, both for the cell identification and the spot identification. But I will skip this point and we'll just um, go over to uh, the batch run. So, um, this will uh, analyze um, the images in the background, and uh, the typical workflow would look like this. So you annotate images, you um, may adjust settings if you want to, um, create regions slide uh, by slide, and at the end you just click this one button, analyze all images, and then all images would, uh, would be analyzed in the background. Um, and the more processors you have available, uh, the, the faster the analysis will run. And once um, once this is finished, you will get to uh, the next state state in the workflow, which is the quality control. And in this step, you can now um, yeah quality um, have a look at the quality of the cell detection on all the regions. And if you want to, you can also make uh, modifications. So you can exclude cells from the analysis if you are not satisfied with, um, uh, with the detection or if you, for example, in the annotation, you, you didn't um, recognize some of these cells were not uh, non-tumor cells, for example, and you now realize that, then you can uh, remove individual cells um, just by clicking on them, or you can also remove uh, regions or, or just strike through and remove cells from the analysis um, such that they will not be counted in the final statistics. Once that is done, um, you can say I computed, completed the quality control, I will export my results, um, click on the um, export results button, and then you will end up uh, at the final stage as I have shown you uh, here. Um, on this in this particular particular data set, um, how the final result uh, will look like at the end with the histogram and um, yeah and the other statistics. So that's really the complete workflow. So you just go through these uh, very simple steps and you get your um, result out at the, at the end. And um, as uh, Tara mentioned at the beginning. Uh, we will have a second webinar um, scheduled, and uh, I think uh, some of you uh, may already have registered for that, where we go more into depth of the, of the software and spend more time on the software itself, and um, yeah, and a little bit less time on um, on uh, the, the RNA scope uh, assay and, and the validation piece. So I would uh, hand over back to uh, Sarah for uh, moderating the Q&A session. Thank you, Kai. So I'd like to open up the forum for any questions. Please type any questions you have into the chat box that you see. Um, and if there are no questions, then we will just discuss different aspects of the technology. Uh, 
<laughs> well, <More> questions? <laughs>
uh, does the analysis take? So if you analyze the whole slide versus a selected region. Okay, uh, I guess um, Kai? Yep, yep. Can you so <laughs> pick up that one? Yeah, sure. So um, I think uh, for the identification of the cell membrane border, so as we uh, don't have any specific marker that mark the um, cell membrane, it's um, the cell membrane or the border between cells is simulated uh, based on the distance to the nucleus. So there's, this is really like a, um, a cell simulation um, because of the lack of a, a, a membrane signal. Uh, but that being said, I think uh, the, uh, when you look through the results, you will recognize that the, um, let's say uh, uh, for these, these uh, compact tumors that the uh, um, um, cell signals are uh, mapped to the correct um, cell uh, quite reliably. Um, the second question from uh, Susan was, uh, I'm just wondering how long the analysis takes uh, if you analyze the whole slide versus a selected portion. Um, um, I would say the, uh, so um, the, uh, the software was made for uh, really subset uh, analysis of subsets uh, of the whole slide. So um, I don't have um, concrete numbers. Um, you could do this, so you could just circulate the complete um, slide, but I don't have numbers on how long this would take per, let's say, tissue area. I can give you uh, rough numbers or rough estimates if you have a look at these regions, which is probably a population of, uh, let's say, 500 cells or something like that. Um, I would say that this takes about um, 10 seconds to analyze. So if you, uh, and as I said, this is distributed among uh, the processors that you have available. So um, these three regions would be, if you have three processors available, uh, these three regions will process in parallel and give you the results after 10 seconds for this, um, this analysis. Okay. Um, Hi, and this is a good time to point out as well that uh, images can be acquired via any standard scanning analyzer um, that the, the tool can be used with any image that's been acquired by any method. Yeah, this uh, includes includes uh, uh, camera images and includes uh, images acquired by Leica scanners or aperio scanners uh, currently. Yes. Okay. The next and, question yep. is: What is uh, is there ever a need to differentiate between spots in the cytoplasm versus the nucleus? And if so, can Spot Studio quantify that difference? Kai. Or? But, I think probably the uh, first question is more um, for Chao Jung. So is there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I will uh, try to explain uh, the first question, which is a, a very valid question. You know, the, we see uh, if you look at it on the same slide, you will see signals appear to be in the nucleus, and and also signals, of course, appear in the cytoplasm. Where that's where we uh, expect the signals to be. So I have to remember that uh, you have to remember that uh, that. Um, this, a slide, a tissue section, is just a, a fraction of itself. So sometimes not all the spots that appears on the, on, on the, in, in the nucleus actually are, are nuclear. Uh, so that's one, one point. And then uh, there are, of course, there could be uh, the nuclear RNA uh, that, uh, uh, for example, pre-mRNA pre could generate some signals there as well. So currently, uh, we do not make uh, differentiate between these two types of signals when we quantify. So we just uh, those together. Yeah. yeah, and that's also true for the Spot Studio program. So um, this is uh, summarizing our results per cell. Um, yeah. So Kai, would you like to address whether or not, um, if this was something of interest to a researcher, whether or not Spot Studio could uh, look at this difference? So uh, the data currently is not uh, exported. Um, that means that um, with uh, the current version, which is in a better um, program right now, um, um, uh, this is not um, not available to to export the results. But we uh, certainly have a, a roadmap of um, of uh, multiple. Uh, let's say amendments uh, or uh, additional versions of the software that will, um, uh, we will work on, and we are now collecting feedback um, 
exactly like that from uh, our first customers, early access customers, and um, that's uh, very interesting to, to hear that. So I think it's, it's very possible and very, um, um, uh, if it would bring value to, to researchers, then um, this is something that we can build into the software. Okay. And another question uh, from a listener, what is the difference between an individual dot and a clump or cluster of dots? And then, Kai, I'd also like you to talk about how those are analyzed differently with the Spot Studio tool. So um, the, the difference um, is individual dots um, are si single signals that can be um, differentiated from each other, um, meaning um, you have either have clusters uh, with, where it is hard to tell sometimes how many spots are in that cluster. And uh, by, even by eye, you can't tell um, if you have a brown clump of how many uh, spots are in there. So we have tried uh, to separate these from clearly individual spots or, let's say, slightly touching spots that can um, be separated by the software automatically. Uh, so we treat these two differently, but we make a um, calculation based on the area of the um, um, clusters and uh, so um, and intensity of the cluster. So we make a calculation based on that back to an estimate of the total number of uh, spots per cell. And we have evaluated different methods for doing this calculation and um, built the be the best one um, with. Um, the highest co correlation uh, with uh, manual reads to into the software. So this is how the software comes up with what you also see here, number of spots estimated. Um, so this is a combination of the single spots in each cell plus uh, the cluster area translated um, into um, a number of spots. Uh, okay, this is Xiaojun. So I'd like to uh, follow up a little bit on uh, 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 Kai's uh, explanation. It, the difference between a single uh, individual spot versus uh, a cluster or clump of uh, uh, signal clump is that the, si the, single, the single individual dots are most likely representing uh, individual RNA molecules, whereas a cluster of dots or clump of, uh, of uh, dots are a result of overlapping signals from you know, crowding of the mRNA targets in the cell. So this um, can be technical, but could also have a biological, biologically uh, uh, mechanism behind it. For example, the clusters could be could be represent a transcriptional spot site, uh, a hot spot that is usually is the site of the gene in the nucleus. And as we know, transcription occurs not as a, at a continuous rate, but it occurs in, in both modes. So sometimes multiple copies of mRNA are generated almost instantaneously. And this will be overlapping, you know, appear as a as a clump in the nucleus, for example. Okay, thank you, Shaolin. Yeah. Um, and yeah, one final question is, what is the cost of Spot Studio? I'd like to introduce Anjali Pradhan, who can address this. She's our product manager. So um, first of all, thank you everyone for attending this webinar. I think regarding the cost of Spot Studio, um, we will be, you can contest, contact us directly at uh, marketing at acdbio.com. Um, what, we're, what we're working on is the final pricing model. And what you will find out that it is uh, different for academic versus industrial pricing. And it's also dependent on the number of images um, you analyze typically for your projects. So we need both of that, uh, both of those pieces of information individually from you to provide you with the pricing guideline. So if you could send us an email at uh, marketing at acdbio.com, we will be happy to follow up with you. All right. Thank you, Anjali. So that's all the time we have today for our webinar. Thank you, everyone, for attending and for the great questions. A link to the recorded webinar will be sent around at the conclusion. And please feel free to share this with your colleagues. And if you have any follow-up questions on the RNA scope technology or our products or pricing, please email marketing at acdbio.com. You can also email questions about the Definian's uh, tools for digital pathology 
to Kai Hartman at khartman at justinians.com. Also, again, this is a two-part series, and please join us for the next webinar, which will be held on May 7th at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern. It will be entitled Empowering Pathologists with an Easy-to-Use Tool for Quantitative Biomarker Analysis. And this will have a, a more in-depth demonstration of the SPOT Studio tool and how to use this new tool for quantitative in situ analysis at a much more granular level. A registration link will be sent along with a link to the recorded webinar. And please share with your colleagues. Thank you. Bye.